produce comes in a variety of different shapes, colors, and sizes, and they're also grown in different ways. Hi, I'm Dr. Kurt Nolte from the University of Arizona, and I'm here today to share with you or recommend to you some tips or some recommendations that you can implement into your own growing practices. Essentially what we're going to be talking about is minimizing the risk associated with irrigation and irrigation water quality. So with that in mind, let's just go ahead and get started. Water is essential to all life. It's essential for crop growth and it's also essential for some harvesting practices. We need to make sure that our irrigation water is free of significant microbial contamination. I say significant because the USDA gift gap guidelines suggest that the minimum standard for irrigation water is of recreational quality. In other words, if the water is a quality suitable for swimming or recreating, then the water quality should be sufficient for irrigating specialty crops. The EPA recreational water quality criteria suggest using generic E. coli at 126 colony forming units per 100 milliliters of water as that standard. A laboratory that specializes in water quality can provide you with this evaluation or a municipal source can also provide you with these reports. One of the ways to reduce microbial contamination in water is to protect the source of water from contamination. A good recommendation to follow is to restrict domestic animals and livestock or wildlife from intruding into surface waters such as irrigation ponds, ditches, and canals. Moreover, water delivered to fields from wells and irrigation pumps must be monitored for animal encroachment. These steps can minimize the risk associated with fecal contamination in water conduits such as irrigation ditches and canals and protect our crops from contamination. We also want to protect our surface waters from potential contamination associated with runoff. There are several ways that we can manage runoff, particularly those areas that are associated with, with large feedlot operations or, for example, the animal pens that are behind me. One of the things that we can do is construct a diversion berm, such as the berm in front of me here, to divert runoff from entering a canal or an irrigation ditch. We can also plant vegetation or sod or grass in close proximity to the irrigation ditch to minimize the risk associated with runoff in that area. We can also uh, provide a slope uh, away from the irrigation ditch itself. So if there is runoff or discharge, then it would be less likely for the discharge to enter the irrigation ditch. At our particular facility, we use distance as well as a diversion berm, as well as grass and sod plantings to protect our irrigation system from contamination. Here are some recommended guidelines provided by the USDA regarding water quality. If the water is a surface water such as that behind me, then the water needs to be evaluated at least three times. The first, prior to planting, the second, at peak water use, and third, uh, at harvest. At each time a water sample is taken, it must be taken directly from the source and at a close proximity to that of which the crop is grown. If the water is derived from a well, a water sample is evaluated at least once during production. And if a municipal water source is used, the water is assessed for generic E. coli at least once at any time during the year. In many cases, a municipality will provide these test results for you. In the unlikely and unfortunate event of detecting contaminants in irrigation water that are above the minimum standard, a grower would be required to take immediate action. Number one, the grower would not be allowed to use contaminated water to irrigate crops. Number two, if the crop itself has been in contact with contaminated irrigation water, product testing would be required to minimize the risk associated with crops that are already in the ground. In the most catastrophic instances, the crop itself in the field would be destroyed. This is all to protect the public from microbial contamination in the food that they purchase from you. And from years of water testing, we know that water derived from a surface source, and again, we're talking about a pond, a stream, an irrigation ditch, or even collected rainwater off your roof, we know that these sources are risky, and much more risky than that derived from the municipal water source. Water is one of the most critical parts of food safety, as it could be the conduit for the introduction of contamination in fresh leafy greens. Moreover, using contaminated irrigation water at any of these points is a leading cause of contamination in many parts of fresh produce. Thank you for watching. Let's work together to keep the public safe and minimize the risk in organically grown fresh leafy greens.